Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and now in this video, we will be understanding the Rutherford's atomic model. So initially what happened was that Dalton and Thomson proposed a model of an atom. So to check whether the proposed model is right or wrong, uh, Rutherford carried out an experiment which is known as the scattering experiment and it was carried out in 1909. So first we will understand its construction. So initially we take radium in the lead block. Okay, this is the radium which is taken in the lead block. Now what is the use of this radium? This radium is unstable. Okay, and it wants to become stable. Therefore, it will undergo decomposition and it will emit alpha particles. Can you see this beam of alpha particles? This is emitted because of the radium. Okay. It emits alpha particles and these alpha particles are positively charged. Now you might be wondering how can a radium emit alpha particles. Don't worry, I have already made a video on this. You can find the link in the description box below. Okay. Now this beam of alpha particles is bombarded on a very very thin plate of gold foil. Okay, a very thin gold foil is taken over here and its thickness is 100 nanometer which is very very small amount okay and this gold foil is surrounded by a screen which is made up of zinc sulfate now what happens is that when these alpha particles after passing through the gold foil hit on the zinc sulfate screen they will create a tiny flash of light on the zinc sulfate screen Wherever the heat on the zinc sulfate screen, there they will create a tiny flash of light. Okay, so I hope you have understood the construction. Now, let us understand its observations. What are the observations made? You might be wondering, what is this diagram all about? This diagram is nothing but a top view of this thin gold foil edge. I will explain you. You are watching this thin gold foil from top with the help of a microscope okay only this thin edge of gold foil is viewed from top with the help of a microscope now with the help of a microscope when you are viewing we get a magnified version this is what is the magnified version of this top edge I hope you are able to understand. We are viewing with the help of a microscope. Therefore, this top edge is appearing, appearing for us to be too broad. Okay. This is broad because we are viewing with the help of a microscope. This thin edge is what is represented over here. This is what is necessary for us to understand first. Okay. And the second thing I want to make clear that Many of you might be having a misconception that atoms are circular in shape. No, atoms are spherical in shape. First make these two things clear. That this diagram is nothing but a top view of this thin edge. And since we are viewing with the help of microscope, therefore it is appearing broad for us. And the second thing is that atoms are spherical in shape. Okay. So now what was observed was that when you pass this alpha particles through this gold foil most of the alpha particles passed without deflection okay that is they pass straight can you see these alpha particles which are passing straight okay these alpha particles are passing straight many of them are passing straight without deflection and some of the alpha particles were deflected by an angle less than 90 degree see can you see this particle over here this alpha particle instead of traveling in a straight line see instead of traveling in a straight line it deflected from its path so what is the angle made by this deflected ray and the actual path it is obviously less than 90 instead of traveling in a straight line it went deflected and this angle is less than 90 degree okay 
So some of the alpha particles were deflated by an angle less than 90 degree. And what was the ratio? That around one particle out of 8000 alpha particles were deflected in this fashion. That is less than 90 degree. Now what was the third observation made? That very few alpha particles were deflected by a large angle greater than 90 degree. Which means that can you see this alpha particle instead of traveling in a straight line, it is deflected away. Okay, that is it is this can you see this angle? This angle is obviously greater than 90 degree. So that is what mentioned in the third point that very few alpha particles were deflected by a large angle greater than 90 degree. This angle is greater than 90 degree. And what was the ratio that one particle out of 30,000 were deflected? Okay, so very few amount as compared to this that is one particle out of 8,000. And what was the last observation? This is very crucial observation that a very, very, very few particles were reflected by 180 degree. That is this ray which you pass heat on the gold foil, they will reflect they were reflected by 180 degree that is it is reflected back to the source of alpha particles and what was their ratio one alpha particle out of 10 million okay means very rare very rare alpha particles were reflected back by 180 degree now i want you all to visualize this therefore i am explaining you all again okay so some of the alpha particles were reflected by an angle less than 90 degree as you can see over here this and which is this ray or in this diagram these are those rays see which are deflected by less than 90 degree and what is the third point very few particles are deflected by a large angle greater than 90 degree see these are those rays which are reflected back somewhat back in a particular angle see this is what is represented over here okay and what was the last observation that very very few particles were reflected back by an A 180 degree that is we cannot see them because it is reflected straight back to the source of alpha particles the same path is followed back again okay now on the basis of these observations Rutherford made some conclusions what are those conclusions we will understand it a atom consists of large empty space why he concluded this because as you can see that many of the alpha particles passed without deflection. The first point, most of the alpha particles passed without deflection. So on the basis of that observation, he said that atom consists of large empty space. The second one, the positively charged alpha particles get repelled and deflected by positive charges in the atom. Now you might be wondering that why why are these particles actually getting deflected? First of all, let me tell you all that you must be knowing that similar charges repel each other. Am I right? So these alpha particles are positively charged. So they were since they are positively charged, therefore they were repelled by the protons which are present in the nucleus. Am I right? Positive charges, positively charged proton will repel the positively charged alpha particles. Am I clear? This is what this second point states to us that a positively charged alpha particle get repelled and deflected by the positive charges which are nothing but proton in the atom. He named this positively charged space of an atom as nucleus. So he said that wherever these positive charges are present, we will name them to be nucleus. Nucleus was named by Rutherford. The volume occupied by the nucleus is negligible as compared to the volume of atom. What he said is that the nucleus is very very small as compared to the volume of an atom. And he also mentioned the size. He said that the size of an atom is 10 raised to minus 10 meter whereas the size of the nucleus is 10 raised to minus 15 meter which is a very very small size am i right now on the basis of these conclusions rutherford proposed the model of an atom so after thomson and after dalton it was a rutherford who proposed the model of an atom 
what actually rutherford tell in his model is that first point an atom consists of tiny positively charged nucleus at its center he said that there are protons which are present in the nucleus okay second he said that almost entire mass of an atom is concentrated in the nucleus why because electrons are very very electrons have very very small mass and the mass is so small that it can be neglected as compared to the protons and neutrons which are present in the nucleus so it automatically proves that nucleus is heavily charged as compared to the mass of the electrons third point is that electrons will revolve around the nucleus in various orbits okay this is what he said that they revolve around the nucleus in various orbits and he also mentioned that the number of positively charged particles in an atom is equals to the number of negatively charged particles in an atom so he said that the positive charge is equals to negative charge and because of this an atom is stable this is what he tried to tell and the last point is that the electrons and nucleus are held together by electrostatic force of att attraction so he said that the electrostatic force of attraction is what is responsible for holding the electrons with respect to the nucleus and revolve them in an orbit now but this another force atomic model had certain drawbacks we will understand what is the drawbacks according to maxwell's theory of electromagnetic radiation when a charged particle is moving in a circular manner that is when it is revolving it gives out radiation and loses energy okay so who is that charged particle in rutherford's atomic model electron electron is revolving around the nucleus and since it is revolving what happens is that it gives out radiations and as it is giving out radiations it is also losing energy and due to this electron should also come closer to the nucleus by following the spiral path and ultimately fall into the nucleus which means that if its energy is decreasing it will not be able to follow the circular path as it initially did that is this is the longer path which is actually should be followed by the electron but it since it is losing energy therefore it will come closer and closer to the nucleus following smaller orbits and ultimately a point will come when the electron will fall into the nucleus and the time required for the electron to fall into the nucleus is only 10 days to minus 10 seconds but have you ever seen that any model getting shrink which means that even our body if the electrons are coming to the nucleus which means that the size of an atom is decreasing so our body will also shrink in 10 days to minus 10 seconds but this is what is not observed in a daily life so hence rutherford's atomic model was proved wrong so guys you can check out my channel where i have uploaded 11th and 12th physics and chemistry videos and if you like this video then please do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more such videos and do like below if you have any doubts you can comment below and do not forget to share this video with your friends as well